This is Undead Viking. I want to talk to you about this game. It's called Wasteland Justice. This is from Mad Beard Game Company, which is a pretty awesome name for a games company. Anyway, but regardless, uh, this uh, is a game, a racing game, uh, that is put into like the far future, the Mad Max world, if you will. You're you're well familiar, I'm sure. Uh, where uh, for fun and profit. Uh, Biker or street gangs or, or mutants or what have you uh, gather around this decrepit old racetrack, um, load up a team of uh, miscreants and sociopaths into uh, three different uh, sized uh, vehicles of mayhem and murder and set them loose on each other in a uh, race until there is basically one team left standing. Uh, you will be racing around the board, uh, shooting each other up, ramming other cars, trying to set them on fire with flamethrowers, all kinds of good, crazy, fun stuff that I have come to love uh, in these heavily thematic as Ameritrash games that I, I, I enjoy a great deal. These are the types of games that I played and I cut my teeth on when I was younger before I actually got really into this whole designer board game world. Um, I knew when the company contacted me and asked me if I was interested in taking a look at this, I remember they sent me like just like two paragraphs, and it was just like, Wasteland, apocalyptic world of, of you know, giant vehicles and machine guns, bullets, and flames. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, bring it here, bring it here. Let me see this, let me play this. And I was really excited to give it a shot. And my friends and I, we had an absolute blast with this. You have to, I, I've said this a few times, said this many times. Um, my gaming group are comprised of these same gentlemen that I have known since I was a teenager, which is now uh, 30 years ago. So I am very blessed to have these long-standing, long-running friends that um, we've grown up with these games together and we've expanded our, our, our gaming you know, library and our mind and also like our games. Uh, but, you know, we've never really forgotten our roots and what, what brought us here. And this is a game that appeals to that 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 feeling, that, that root that we have and that we have all together. So um, I have a feeling that if you're watching this video, you are probably somebody who enjoys these types of games as well. So let's dive into the mechanisms. Let's dive into how the game is played and how it looks. And then we'll come back here and I'll tell you a little bit more about why I really enjoy playing and killing my friends in Wasteland Justice. All right, cool. Uh, this is Wasteland Justice, and as you can probably guess, this is a racing game. However, uh, you win the game by basically making the other players' cars uh, explode into uh, these little wreck figures over here, as you can see. But I'll explain all of that as I show you how to play the game. Now, to begin the game, uh, each person is going to get three of these boards. They are for your medium, their light, and their heavy car. And you notice there's these spots for the cards. There's a spot for a driver, and then on the heavy car, um, they have a spot for a mod. They have a spot for either a mod or a weapon, and the spot for a weapon. Um, the light car, just a driver, and then a mod or a weapon spot. And then the medium car has one of each. Now, each person is going to get all three of these because all three uh, cars are present on each team as you can probably guess here's the heavy the medium and the light car uh, so you are going to get these cards that are up here as well that you're going to be using to pick. You're going to get uh, four driver cards, five weapon cards, and five mod cards. Now I will explain the cards here in just a little bit. Um, just keep in mind that the cards are basically things that break the rules. They give you certain powers and certain abilities. And like I said, we'll kind of look at those here in just a little bit. But I just want to go over uh, the basic mechanisms so you have an idea of how this works. All right, so on your turn, and this is a game where each person takes their turn, the next person goes, and the next person goes, and the next person goes. On your turn, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to roll these three dice. And these three dice determine how far each one of your cars can move. Uh, the green die is for your light car, the yellow die is for your medium car, and your red die is for your heavy car. Um, now, it should be noted, like, like both these two dice here have a maximum of six, and, like, you know, they do have, like, and they don't, no, nothing goes one. And the reason why nothing goes one is because you notice there's, like, pavement here and then, like, off-road there. 
If at any time you enter or are in an off-road area, you reduce your roll by one, so you don't go as fast. So, uh, so if you roll these dice and it's your turn, what you're gonna do is you roll them like I just did, and then we look and see what we got. We got a three for our, our light, we got a four for our a medium, and a four for our uh, heavy. And then what you do is then you just pick each car and decide where it's going to go. So if we, this the first player is is white. So what you can do then is you when you move, you have to move uh, like either in the one right in front of you or either of the ones actually pretty much what you probably expect. And you want to stay on the pavement, right? Because you want to be fast, you want to get going, you want to be, be uh, always traveling forward. Now, of course, is when I show you the weapons, sometimes weapons are things that like would shoot, you know, you can only either attack somebody that's in front of you or like, and some of them are like to the rear and so forth. So when you pick your weapons, you might kind of have an idea of where you want the car to be. But for the most part, you want to keep moving. And so like, if you just move them each turn, so this, you know, our, our light car can move three, maybe you go like one. And the thing is, is that you can go through your own car without having to worry about anything. Uh, if you do that though, you can't end up in the exact same spot. So just keep that in mind. So you go one, two, three, maybe your medium car, or let's see the heavy car has a, has a four. So we can go one, two, three, four. And then your medium car got a four as well. So you can go one, two, three, four. And that would be your entire turn. The thing is, is that at the very beginning of the game, nobody can shoot anybody uh, for the first turn. It's just, it's kind of, expected that you just kind of have to play by the rules and make sure that you don't you know start blasting each other right away you also can't ram each other uh for that first turn either so just keep that in mind as you're playing the game then so each player will do that in turn i'm not going to roll for each person's turn i just want to go through the entire process but the big thing is that you if you go into the off-road so like let's say we're doing the purple and like for whatever reason like i got a three for the heavy if i went like this i couldn't go three i couldn't go one two three i'd have to go there even if i were to leave and go back onto the pavement i'm stuck because i minus one to the movement if for whatever reason say like i went one two and, you know, there were, like, I, I had a car in front of me in the block. I couldn't go here. I mean, I could probably ram them, but if I didn't want to ram the car, I couldn't go there because that would be, I'd have to minus one for my movement for entering into off-road. So that I'd go down, so with that two result, I wouldn't be able to do that. So just keep that in mind. The, this, the, the quick rule of thumb, if your car uh, either enters the off-road or stays off-road, you, or starts in the off-road on your turn, you have to reduce your die roll by one. Now, these dice are used for a lot of different things. They're used for uh, checking a RAM. Uh, they're used for uh, checking to see if uh, you get wrecked if you get rammed. Uh, they have different icons on there as well. And so, like you can see, there's a little bullet there, and I'll explain that in just a little bit. And then you can see there's a little wreck there. That's what you don't want to roll if you get rammed. And I'll explain ramming here in just a little bit. And you can see there's this little explosion there as well. All right, so, and also you can see there's this little, like, it took me a while to realize what that was, but if you look at it very carefully and I turn it this way, that's a ram head. And so then there's the three the three pips there for a ramming result. All right, so just, all right, there you go. That's that's how that is. Um, so the reason why there's all those different icons on there is because what uh after um like everybody has crossed this this line and these are very important lines both these yellow arrows here and these yellow arrows here yellow arrows over arrows over here it's very important because if you are able when you roll your dice if you roll three of the same result like three bullets you're able to use that and turn it in here i'll show you like three bullets like so you're able to turn those three bullets into an ammunition that you can go ahead and add back to your uh, one of your cars that has used its gun. So, like, you can see, like, the machine gun has an ammo of two. And so I'm, I'm showing this a little earlier. I'm going to show you how combat works in just a little bit. But so, like, you'd put, like, you, you'd, you'd put two of these little uh, bullet counters on here, like so. 
and when you use the machine gun, you'd remove one, and the next time you move it, you move the other one. And then you'd have to get a result like that to be able to go ahead and place ammo back on there. There's other things you can do as far as with the cards and things like that, but that's the most common way. And some of them, like you know, like the homing missile, just has ammo of one, and so you desperately need to get these results to go ahead and improve that. Now the other cool thing is, is that there are all these little explosions on there. And what that means is that this is a race that's being held in like a dystopian uh, future. And so your buddies, your gang buddies, are watching this race and they don't want to see uh, their opponents, so they don't want to see like opposing gangs win. And so they will actually attack uh, and, and hurt um, the other players' uh, cars with, with those rolls. And so uh, if you get three of those, then you can actually do damage uh, to another player's car. Basically, it's considered that, like, uh, you know, somebody on the outskirts, like, took a pot shot with a sniper rifle or maybe even with a rocket-propelled grenade or something like that, and you go ahead and you could do a point of damage, which can be very devastating because if you look, even, like, the light car only has one little spot there for damage. And so, like, if you did that, then you'd go ahead and place it on there, and then the car would become wrecked. Now... Being wrecked, let's just so this car, let's say this car became wrecked. You turn it upside down like so, and all is not lost. If you get wrecked, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're done and that car is destroyed. Um, but like if you when you roll your your turn, there is on some of the results this little wrench here. And if you get that, you are able then to go ahead and flip them over and they're able to drive off on that very same turn. So you can get that. Now, the problem is, is that if this happens and you get lapped, basically somebody manages to get over over to that and get to that second line like and this is only after like you have to everybody gets past this and so you don't really worry about that so a better example yeah would be like yeah you're behind this and you didn't make it to this yellow line because like here would be fine you'd be okay when it reaches there but if somebody made it all the way over to this one then you'd be done but so like if you made it past that these yellow lines any cars that are like this are then replaced with these wrecks, and then the person that controls that car turns it over to show that it's been destroyed. And once you had your car destroyed, you can't get it back. You just it's gone, it's done, and it's it's over. These wrecks, in fact, actually do obviously don't go away. Uh, cars can run into those as they're driving. If you run into them, you are forced to roll your die of the car that runs into it, you know, so uh, light would be your, let's, let's, let's actually give it a better chance here. So like, let's say they can choose to like go around it, but if they want to go through it, they have to then roll the die that's associated with that type of car, which is this. In this situation, you are going to be looking for the RAM result, and you don't want to roll one with the RAM result because if you roll one with the RAM result, you take a point of damage. So in this case, we got a RAM result of two, meaning that we'd be fine and we'd be able to go through that spot that has that wreck. So we just go through it. You know, pretty straightforward, but you know, it's just as the game <laughs> goes on, uh, more and more of these wrecks will appear on the map and will start uh, obviously uh, gumming up the works and you'll be weaving in and out. So there isn't like a lapse, so to speak, like you aren't like saying, okay, six laps around, whoever wins, wins. It's more of like you're trying to get these people's cars to get wrecked, either by damage that they've taken from collisions or weapons. Or, or just by ramming them, and I'll explain ramming here in just a second, um, and getting them flipped over and then having this somebody get past this yellow, these yellow breakers, either when, you know, and, and then that's when you would then destroy those cars. And so when that happens, uh, you then, you know, hopefully you've knocked other people out of the game and then you are managing to win. All right, so ramming, and then I'm going to talk about weapons here. Ramming occurs when on the final pip of your movement you run into uh the car that you are running into like so so like you end up in the same spot and now you are ramming that particular car so each person will take the die that represents the type of car they have so this would be a light car ramming a heavy car probably not the best decision somebody can make 
But, you know, in desperate times, call for desperate measures. And so you are then going to go ahead and roll those two dice and compare the two results. So let's just roll them real quick here and we'll compare. So uh, I rolled horribly. <laughs> I got a one and I got a three for the defender. So you are going to compare those two and then check uh, the RAM results table. Now, if the RAM results are equal, um, nothing happens. Both cars stay in the exact same spot, and then when the next turn comes and, and the purple uh, player would go, they would just leave the spot, and we just take that spot like that, and like you know, move on from that spot. If somebody wins by one, the loser takes a point of damage, and uh, provided that they are not wrecked, um, they start the movement in the same space on their next turn. If the defender wins by two, the attacker takes one damage and the defender evades, and they get to get a free movement to an empty space, or if they want, um, you know, like into a wreck space. So they could, like if there was a wreck there, they could decide to go in there. If they did that, they'd have to roll normal wreck, but they get a free movement and they can go like so, and they can move forward. Now, if we're in a situation where the attacker wins by two or more, and this is why the game has this rule, I think, because it, it wants people to ram and run into each other and prompt this chaos. So if the, the, the unthinkable happened, and let's see, like we got a ram of three, I don't even know, if the, and we got a ram of one. So you beat the, the other car, so the attacker beat the defender uh, by more than two. The defender takes a point of damage, like normal, and then checks to see if they're a wreck. And now it's possible they took a wreck just because of the fact that they took the damage, and so then they'd, uh, you know, like, you know, if, if like, the, the heavy uh, has, you know, up to three, but, like, it's possible maybe they had two spots filled up and they take the third one and they become a wreck anyway. So then what happens is, is that they're going to roll their die again. Now you might notice that there's this little wreck symbol here. If you are unlucky enough to roll that again, let me just see here. No, I didn't. But if you're unlucky to roll that, no matter how many hit points you have left, you automatically become a wreck and you would just turn your car over and then you would suffer the same rules where you're going to need to go ahead and uh, you know, heal because you immediately take full damage and you're going to have to go ahead and get a, uh, a, a wrench result on your movement die uh, to fix something and then so you're able to take off from that spot. If you don't um, wreck th these two, so like we didn't roll a wreck like so, the attacker then will push the, the offending like person that's behind into an empty spot that's in front of them. If you're lucky enough to have a wreck spot in front of you, you can push them into the wreck spot and then forcing them to make a wreck roll again. If for some weird reason, and this is the only way it really can happen, if like you are unable to push them forward, say like you know you just had uh, all kinds of cars around them like so and you can't push them because you can't push them into somebody else to cause like you can push them into a wreck but you can't push them in another car um, you then will roll like just do two points of damage uh, to the car uh, the, instead of just taking one and then you just kind of stay in the exact same spot now you can't push them off the road just so you know you can't like you know like try to like oh we're gonna push you off the road and you know and, and into like automatic oblivion or anything like that unfortunately uh, that is not an option for you all right so Finally, before we talk about cards, weapons. How do weapons work? Well, weapons um, have their own special die. It's this die right here. And depending upon the weapon, you have to determine whether or not you can actually affect whatever it is you're trying to hit. So let's just see here. So we have a flamethrower. All right, so you can see it, the flamethrower, uh, two, spa two adjacent spaces um, from front of vehicle. So if we had this car here and it had a flamethrower and that car was there, you could look and see that yes, we could attack that particular uh, uh, car. Now the interesting thing is, is that if you have the flamethrower is the one uh, weapon that can actually affect both locations because it's a big giant stream of flame, obviously. And so what happens then is you're going to take this weapon die and you're going to see like it has a, a, a marking for each of the different weapons. Uh, there's like the machine gun uh, and, the, and the turret. Uh, I, I'm talking about weapons you probably haven't seen yet, but I'll explain them in a second. There's a homing missile, a flamethrower, and a Molotov cocktail. The little green dot on there means that it's a hit, meaning that whatever damage is done, so like you can see damage one on hit, you would do that damage. But other results are like this. That means uh, that it is a jam, uh, meaning that you don't actually use the ammo 
and but and you can use the weapon the next turn, but it is a miss. You know, so you don't actually do the damage. Some of them have this little X, meaning that you miss the attack. You use the ammo, and you, which stinks because you know, there's not a lot of ammo with these, and you got to make sure you get those rolls uh, to to after that. You know, like so you can replenish both either your ammo or do damage to other people. Uh, so that the but the worst possible one is this. These little explosions here. That means that not only did the weapon uh, misfire, did you, not only did you use the ammo up, but you also, the thing ex blew up inside your car and did damage to you. So you take a point of damage, and so you can actually... So weapons like flamethrowers have, unfortunately, uh, have a tendency. You can see there's an explosion, there's an explosion. Uh, you know, and so they have a one in three shot of blowing you up. Uh, when you roll it. So like if you're but but they can hit two people. So let's see what we get here Let's see if we get lucky here. So We, we blow and we got lucky. So we got two hits So we would dig do a point of damage to both of these cars and this would cause that to be a wreck Because as we've already said, you know, these light cars only have one hit point and that'd be pretty cool if we actually pulled that off so that's something uh, you can do. Um, you, when you use weapons, obviously you use up the ammo involved, and so you just take those off and place them off to the edge, and you can go through there. Now, one of the things that's cool, if you do wreck an opponent's vehicle, either by ramming them or uh, by uh, uh, like uh, shooting them like I just did, you get a token, uh, uh, a, a fan interference token, which is... Remember those explosion rolls that we did? If you got three of them, you could use them to uh, like do damage to another player. You get one of these little tokens, basically kind of like a morale token, or basically you get the, the, the crowd watching on your side. And you can use these in conjunction uh, to... Uh, like if you got only two results with the explosion, so you got that one and that one, but this one came up, you could say one, two, but I'm going to use my token, third token, you could turn it in, and then you'd have three, and then you could do that point of damage to somebody else's car. So it's kind of cool that like you can collect those. And so it also prompts you to like use your weapons, run into people. The more wrecks you do, the better off you are. So, all right, so cool. Uh, so the other, some of the other weapons I mentioned we'd talk about, we already showed the machine gun too straight straight ahead and i should mention that some people like said okay it's straight ahead but on the turns it still counts so if you have a, a car here and it's too straight ahead that is too still too straight ahead you know here whoop, i'm moving my my eraser here and here that's too straight ahead it doesn't have you, you follow the curve with the turn uh for for weapons uh so homing missile it isn't good right away but it has a long range so it can go all the way four straight ahead so then that will go around the corners as well um let me see and there's the molotov cocktail that one actually attacks to the rear and so it'd be three spots to the rear and you could drop those and finally uh turrets okay let's see so I didn't get a turret card. Ah, there we go. So, and then finally a turret. And so the turret is one spot all around the car. Not a lot of range, but you know you can you can shoot anything that's close to you. So, weapons. Um, I found them to be like uh, very powerful because remember the most hit points any of your cars have is three. So being able to do even a point of damage to them is huge. Uh, but like I said, it's very tactical. You have to like get yourself in the right position to do them. So just to, so you can see everything else, um, like you get these drivers. Um, as, as I said, these are just things that break the rules in some way. Um, sledgehead, uh, when down to the last damage point on the vehicle, plus one to all ramming rolls. Um, packer, for one weapon only, one additional ammo capacity. Uh, Cogtooth, uh, additional mod card space in the vehicle. So you can see that these are just ways to like kind of, remember you get four of these, so you're going to use three and then you're going to, um, you know, like discard one. Uh, bruiser, rolls, uh, re larger ramming die compared to vehicle for ramming rolls. So, you know, he, he breaks the rules once again. Uh, iron skin, uh, additional one damage capacity for vehicle. So pretty good ability, especially on a light car, right? So cool things like that, that you get to take these cards and you get to kind of mix and match and, and create something cool. And finally, um, just the mods. Uh, 
these tend to be, as you can see, card flipped when used. So you turn them over, meaning that, and so they aren't like permanent uh, additions. Um, not like, you know, the, the, the drivers have these passive abilities that pretty much get be able to be used uh, at all times. Weapons, as long as you have ammo, you can use them. These tend to be one shot uh, type of things. So like, remember, plus one uh, to a single ram attack, and you'll be doing this. Um, this is like one that is, does have a passive ability. Uh, ignore the off-road penalty, so you don't flip it, or avoid a wreck collision once uh, and then flip the card. So that's a pretty good power ability. Uh, team starts with a crowd token. This card does not flip, nor does it refresh. So you automatically start with one of those little explosion tokens. Um, here, armor plating. When defending weapon attack, uh, make attack a rerolled weapon die. But of course, then you have to re flip it over. So cool little mods. Um, once again, like I said, you're just going to uh, go through those and you're going to use them uh, interchangeably on each one of these little uh, cards just to make the best possible team of the three cards that you have to try to survive the longest uh, because it really is yeah there's a lot of mayhem there's a lot of a lot of weapon weapon damage there's a lot of explosions if you will which make the game a lot of fun but it really is uh in my opinion kind of a, a race of longevity it is not only are you trying to make sure that you are um you know, uh, beating your opponents into the pavement, but it is a lot about trying to keep your uh, cars in the best possible position, at the, you know, and, and keeping them out of harm's way, uh, being able to deal out the maximum amount of uh, damage and mayhem while receiving the least amount in return. Um, at its heart, yes, there it is, it is a lighter uh, tactical, lighter strategy game, uh, but, um, uh, you know, it is uh, phenomenally fun, uh, and and I never do I feel um, like my turn is either uh, wasted in a way like I don't like do anything uh, uh, positive. I don't get something you know interesting happening in each one of my turns. Uh, but I also you know, it's just like the immersion of of each and every roll. This these dice and the like you know everybody watching the die roll as it clunks down to see whether or not you you miss. Oh man, all four misses. You know you like, get bad luck with your your weapons or what have you. Just you know, like I said, uh, it, nobody's sitting on their phone uh, checking Facebook or, or checking their, 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 their Twitter machine uh, on somebody else's role. You're always paying attention to seeing where everybody else is pushing their cars and whether or not they're going to get attacked. So uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it, it is, it is uh, both uh, like hilarious and cringeworthy at times, but I'll talk more about all of that uh, in my final thoughts, which I will do uh, right now. All right, thank you very much for uh, sitting through that and learning how to play Wasteland Justice. I did go over, like I said, the, the, the mechanisms. I didn't want to go through like each and every card. I didn't want to show you each and every turn. But you can kind of imagine how the game progresses. It is one of those things where from the get-go, bam, you're gone and you're, you're racing around the board and you have decisions to make every single turn. Do I want to move in front of somebody? It just means they might run into me. Do I want to like, you know, get in a position perfectly so I can use a certain weapon? Do I want to stay on the pavement? Do I want to go off road? You know, all those things that you can't like you, you, you kind of can bet or hedge your, uh, hedge your, uh, bets, uh, so to speak, uh, with, what the other players are going to do or what you think they might be trying to do. The nice thing is, is that they do have everybody's player boards, that you put out in front of you with the cards. I mean, that is that is common knowledge. It isn't secret. They aren't like, you know, oh, you know, looking at the cards and that's thing. So you can tell if somebody's got a missile. <laughs> you know, because you'd see that, right? You see this giant missile on the on the on the back of some uh, tractor trailer rig or whatever. Um, you'd see that and you'd say, okay, I don't want to be in front of him, you know? And so like, those are those moments that like I was talking about, like when people are rolling the dice to see how far a certain car can get or what have you, um, you know, is, is like that that's the moment where you're like, everybody watches those die rolls. And then when you see them roll, uh, that's when the begging and the pleading begins. And that's the kind of game within the game that this type of game uh, fosters. If you, everybody believes like a certain player is like, like they have all three of their cars and everybody else has lost one. Everybody's like, we got to get them. We got to go after that guy. We got to get him. We got to take him out. We got to, we got to knock him down, uh, bring him down to our level kind of thing. And, uh, and, and I enjoy that. I enjoy, like I said, that game beyond the game, the conversations, the, the, the cursing, the, the swearing of, of oaths of vengeance uh, for, for your lost teammates and what have you. And 
Um, this game reminded me a lot, and I don't know for sure if the designers ever played this, but it reminded me a lot of a game that's like right over there. You can't see it, but it is called Circus Imperium, uh, which is this uh, chariot race game where everybody whips these beasts, and then they these like beasts carry these chariots around this uh, track, and um, you know after like everybody starts off nice and fresh and clean. Uh, like the first turn and after that first turn that's when all of a sudden the blood and the pain and the explosions begin and it's like it's just mass mayhem and um this game is not considered to be like some sort of highbrow let's think this out let's get our victory points type of situation game this is a game of brutal combat of rolling dice of like you know like cheering and yelling and and just having a good time and the thing is, is that a lot of these games are are good but they end up lasting way too long and then uh you know they, they overstay their welcome i mean you i love mayhem games but you know if you're two hours into it and you're still like uh, uh, you know you're, it, <laughs> the game has uh it's that last guest at the party that just hasn't gotten the hint they need to go and this game does not do that you do not have a situation where people are hanging about you are going to be eliminated uh rather quickly if you have poor luck um you are going to uh but but the thing is you might be eliminated but you know within 15 minutes somebody else is eliminated if not everyone else <laughs> and um you end up like you know just being the game's done and then you you all theoretically had a really good time like we did and we just rebooted got new cards got new stuff and we started up and played it again i mean it's it's a game that warrants extra plays just because there's all kinds of cool things you can try to do. I mean, like those little those those the, the little cars, the light cars, they are super fast in comparison to the other other uh, cards. So if you get it like that that card that allows it to go off road without any like reduction in speed, I mean that could just be your plan. Use your other two cars to bash the other ones, get them wrecked, get that car all the way around to like pass that line you know, to lap them, basically, and then turn those cars into wrecks. I mean, that can just be a plan that you can have. You can, uh, like, just basically, like, you know, make try to have all your cars kind of hang back and be slow. You know, make sure they go off-road so they slow down. And then make sure you have a bunch of weapons that shoot forward and so nobody can ram you. And I, speaking of ramming, I really like the fact that, like, they made ramming, you know, uh, like, I, I don't want to say, like, it makes it good for for the attacker because you can have things go poorly for you when you ram but it definitely like it it the rule the way the rules are um it doesn't make ramming unappealing um the fact that you can just take somebody's car out if they roll poorly enough on the die roll like you know just oh hey i did a point of damage you know roll the die and then like they turn around and like they roll that that one they get the wreck counter bam they're they're gone they're out i mean that's just that, i mean yeah it's it's bad luck but i mean but the chance is there so you could be like you know on the like ropes and like you know you don't have anything you're down to one car but that one car could turn into a giant murder machine if you just with a few lucky rolls and and then once again that's the whole immersion factor that's the whole thematic game the ameritrash like feel of these games is that these games propagate those cheering moments those storied moments where you have like and it's like yes you know it's like the, you know my buddy or you just say yeah my buddy was like cruising to victory he had two cars left and then for the course of three bad die rolls all of his cars had exploded and we had passed him and he had, he was out of the game i mean it's just like and you recollect that and you remember that and you cheer for that and that's why you play games like this for those memories for that excitement and for that fun uh that you remember having with your friends sitting at the table so there you go. That is why I love Wasteland Justice. Uh, if you have any questions about the game, uh, by all means, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those to the best of my ability. Um, uh, as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I am the Undead Viking, and I am telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right.